I remember spending time with God and I said, God, why don't she get it? Why don't she get it? Why does she keep putting herself in this situation? Why can't she just get it? And God said to me so clearly, that same grace that I gave you to get back up over and over again, give her that same grace. That same grace that you needed when you kept falling, when you kept going back to the porn, when you kept going back to the people, when you were in the homosexual lifestyle, that same grace that you asked me for extended to your mother. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dejanae D'Antonio and I always like to refer to myself as a fierce and fiery woman of God. And I don't say it just to be cute, I say it as a reminder of who God has called me to be as bold as a lion on fire for God in every area of my life and challenging you to do the same. If you are new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you are returning, thanks for coming on back, girl. So today we are going to be talking about healing from mother's wounds in light of Mother's Day. And I'm gonna tell you a bit of my story and my relationship with my mom. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you some practical things that you can do to begin to work on healing that relationship with your mother or mother figures or things that you need to uproot so that you can be healed in Jesus' name. So, whew, I'll just let me take a little sip of water real quick before we get started. Okay, before I get started, I want to say that I love my mother. Anything that I say is not to bash her. Um, it's telling my story, and this is where we were. We're no longer in this place, right? So I'm just telling my story about what I experienced, my, um, my perspective and my viewpoint of what I experienced. So it's nothing, I love my mother so much, it's nothing that I'm saying to bash her or to paint her out to be something that she's not. So let me say that. Mom, if you're watching this, I love you, I love you, I love you, happy Mother's Day. So me and my mother's relationship growing up was very strained. And um, it started out, um, I was, mm, Holy Spirit. I thought I was like, okay, just, okay. So it started out growing up, my grandmother was very adamant in our lives. She, we would go over there every weekend. I remember my sister having a um, a book bag <laughs> that said, uh, um, a rolling book bag, and it said, going to grandma's house. We were always, you know, at our grandmother's house on the weekends, and she was really an adamant part of, you know, raising us. Rest in peace, grandma. I remember just my mom being in different, um, you know, relationships with men, and, um, it was always in a space where we struggled with having stability, right? My mom was trying to figure her whole life out with six kids, okay? My brothers, they are older, so at the time, I grew, I grew up most of my life just with me and my sister in the actual household. There were times when my brothers moved in and left, but consistently, it was just me and my sister. Um, so, um, there were circumstances over and over again where we really didn't have stability. And when my grandmother passed away, um, I subconsciously developed this resentment towards my mom. And I realized it was because going all the way back when I was younger, I was sexually abused by my brother. And when that happened, it literally muzzled me. When that happened, I felt like it snatched away my identity. Um, and I felt like this is all subconscious. This is something that I wasn't consciously aware of. But back in hindsight, this is what it was. Um, I never felt protected, right? I never, my mom never protected me. And at the time, she didn't know. She didn't know. I never said anything about it. So how can she protect me in a in a way of, about something that she didn't know about? But this is just how I felt. And I felt like there was no protection. And I felt like 
the nurturing. My mom was there physically there, but emotionally she was not available. And um, it created a very strained relationship between me and my mom because of all of this resentment and my anger, the anger that I had in my heart towards her, I would be very disrespectful. And I thank God for the mercy of God because the Bible says, honor your mother and your father so your days can be longer. And I saw so your days will be longer. And I just thank God for mercy because I would curse my mother out. I will run away as much as I can. I will talk back. I would do all of these things. And the mercy is only the mercy of God that kept me. But it was because I was so angry and so, it had so much resentment in my heart towards her. But at the time, I didn't have the intelligence, the emotional intelligence to articulate what I was feeling. So I carried this all of, you know, all of my life up until um, 2018, around 2018. This is when I decided to become 10 toes down for Jesus. And I started to um, really just go deeper in my walk with him. And I remember I was in Jacksonville, Florida at the time. And um, God told me, I thought that I was going to move to Atlanta and be living my best life, y'all. Um, God told me to go back home and heal. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do this, God. Um, I don't understand. And... I went back home to my mother's house and I remember even when I was in college, people would always be like, oh my gosh, Dejanay, like you be going so hard. Like what is your motivation? And I used to always say, I have to go hard because going home is not an option. You know the saying that be like, go hard or go home. I'll be like, I can't go home. Like going home is not an option and not that because I wasn't welcome there, but because I knew that going back home was something that I never wanted to do and it's so funny <laughs> because I ended up going back home anyway um so I went back home and God took me through a journey of healing with me and my mom it was just me and my mom in the house and um growing up my mom she struggled with substance abuse so a lot of things that I would see um I shouldn't have seen at a young age right a lot of things that I would witness I shouldn't have witnessed um, at a young age. And um, I remember the very first day uh, I went home, I was going home. I went to Richmond, Virginia with one of my cousins. She's just so amazing. Shout out to you, Lex. I love you so much. So my cousin, she was aware of, you know, the type of relationship that me and my mom had at the time. And she helped me so much and coached me um, through different things to help me and, and helping me to articulate emotions that I didn't have the language to. And, um, I remember spending a weekend with her cause she had a speaking engagement, um, in Richmond, Virginia. We love Richmond. If you're from Richmond, we love Richmond. The food is top tier. Okay. The hospitality is amazing. So we went there, um, and she had a speaking engagement. And I remember being in the hotel room, we were just talking and, I know it was the Holy Spirit to use her to say in this moment. She said, it was never about you. You were just a casualty of a war that your mother was already experiencing. And y'all, when I say that freed me, that freed me. All this time, I thought it was me. All this time, I thought that, ooh. All this time, I thought that the reason why, you know, I experienced this was because my mother didn't love me or my mother didn't care for me or my mother, it, it was personal. But she said, it, it wasn't about you, sis. <laughs> it wasn't about you. It was, a, it was you were a casualty of a war. You were just in the crossfire of a war that she was already experiencing. And that was my first breakthrough moment with my mom. That was the first breakthrough moment with my mom and allowing me to begin to start to see her differently. So that happened. And then after that weekend was over, I went back home and as I walked into the house, I could feel the spiritual warfare. I could feel the spiritual warfare. It was so heavy. I, I don't know what was going on with my mom. She was irritated and 
I could just feel so much warfare. I had to literally walk back out and ask my cousin to pray for me because it was so heavy. What I know now is that the enemy knew that that season was going to bring me so much healing and so much freedom that he was going to do whatever he could to stop what was about to take place. So I literally ran back out and I was like, cousin, can you pray for me? And I remember her just walking around me in a circle and just praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and just covering me because I knew I was about to open up some things that had been suppressed for so long. So I went back home and began to heal. And at the time, my mom, she was still struggling a bit with substance abuse. It was still something that she was trying to overcome. But it was nowhere near as bad as it was, um, you know, growing up. And I would see it and it would just hurt me to my heart because I would know. And there were times where I would confront her about it. And it was hard for me to have the conversation. But I knew that things were beginning to change because at first she would never acknowledge it. And then she started to be like, yeah, okay, I am, but I'm working on it. And I remember another breakthrough moment that I have. So keep up. I want y'all to keep up with the breakthrough moments. I remember spending time with God. Holy Spirit, I hope this is not all over the place. I remember spending time with God. And I said, God, why don't she get it? Why don't she get it? Why does she keep putting herself in this situation? Why can't she just get it? And God said to me so clearly, that same grace that I gave you to get back up over and over again, give her that same grace. That same grace that you needed when you kept falling, when you kept going back to the porn, when you kept going back to the people, when you were in the homosexual lifestyle. That same grace that you asked me for extended to your mother. Same grace. And I said, wow, here I am judging my mother. Here I am looking at my mother for the things that she is battling with and judging her like I didn't need to put on that same grace. So as I continue to go through my healing journey, we had a lot of hard conversations. We had a lot of hard conversations. I prayed for my mother. I, there were times where I got frustrated. There were times where I, you know, was annoyed. There were times where I just didn't get it and I didn't understand. There were times where I'm like, God, I don't even know what to pray because I'm not seeing anything changing. Or there were times where I would be praying and it seemed as if things were getting worse. And I'm like, God, how? I'm, I'm praying. You said the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much, but I feel like the more I pray, the more hell is breaking loose. I don't understand. And my heart began to soften towards my mom. One book that I read that I would, if you struggle with a parent, it don't even have to just be your mother. If you struggle with a parent who wasn't emotionally present for you, there's a book, um, it's called Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. That book brought me so much language to things that I was experiencing or had experienced growing up that I didn't know. And I read that book and it, it broke chains off of me. And I was able to uh, see my mother in a different light. And then I moved out. Hope y'all staying with me. I moved out. Breakthrough moment number three. I was so worried about moving out because I thought that my mom would be mad. I thought that she would just be angry with me. And my mom walked in my room and I told her, I said, Mom, God is calling me to move out. And she looked at me and she said, it's time. And I know it was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through her. My mom, the Holy Spirit uses my mom a lot to speak to me. And she said, it's time. Hold your head up and go. And I broke, I broke down crying because I thought it was going to be a moment where she was going to be like, yo, why are you moving? Da, 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 da. But she, that, what, mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
What I always looked for in a mom, what I always craved for her to give to me, she gave to me in that moment. She reared me. She said, baby, go forth. It's time. Hold your head up. And I knew that the dynamics of our relationship began to shift. Now, I'm giving y'all the accelerated version, but I pray that it's a blessing, y'all. So I moved out and God took me through a season of just prayer, 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 intercession, fasting. Like I was just so deep I, I, around the clock. I was praying. I was worshiping. I was reading the word, praying, worshiping, reading the word, praying, worshiping, reading the word. That was my life. And I remember I started, some of you may remember for the OG subscribers, the one that's been rocking with me. Um, I, had, I, would, I was doing worship Wednesday where I would get on um, Instagram and I would do live worship. And I remember one of my girlfriends at the time, I was living with her and she told, she came upstairs and she was like, God told me to pray for you for worship Wednesday. And she started to pray. And you know, when the Holy Spirit flow, you know, the Holy Spirit flow. And she started pray concern, praying concerning my siblings. And then she started praying concerning my mom. And God showed me a, a picture or vision of just this disdain, this disgusted look that I had on my face when I looked at my mom. And all I could do was just cry and weep. And God was saying, this is how you look at your mom. You might not physically look like, look like that, look to her like that, but this is what your heart posture is towards your mom. And all I could do was just cry and cry and cry because I said, God, how dare I? What if you looked at me that way? Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. What if you looked at me through the lens of what I put you through? What if you looked at me through the lens of my sin? You never looked at me that way. Man, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. And I just remember laying out on the floor and just crying out to God and crying out for mercy and just repenting. And I, saw, I said, God, help me to love my mother the way you love her. Help me to see. Help me to see my mother the way you see her. And my heart softened even more. Fast forward now, our relationship has gotten so much better. There's still work that has to be done. Because I always say healing is a journey, it's not a destination. But I no longer look at her through the lens of that little girl who needed saving. I no longer look at her through the lens of that teenager that was so mad and bitter and ang angry at her for not being there emotionally. I remember God telling me this one day. He said, Dejanay, it's not going to be solely the prayers that you pray for your family behind their backs. What's going to bring your family to true, to true salvation is reflecting the love of God. The love of God pierces. It says perfect love casts out a multitude of sins. Then I had to look and say, well, what is love? Well, y'all already know where I'm about to go. First Corinthians 13, starting at verse four. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And when I looked at the, the characteristics of love and applied them to how I was treating my mother, it was the complete opposite. I wasn't patient, I wasn't kind, I was prideful, I definitely was dishonoring her. I, I was self-seeking, it was always me, 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 me. I easily got anger. I used to get so irritated with my mother, easily. I kept record of every wrong. 
I didn't, I suppressed the truth and, and suppressed how I really felt. I didn't protect my mom. I didn't trust my mom. I didn't have hope in my mom. And I didn't persevere. When things went wrong, I was just like, yeah, I'm out. And it said, love never fails. So I say all that to say as I begin to wrap up because my body is about to die. When it comes to healing from mother's wounds, get understanding first. Proverbs chapter four, verse seven through nine. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all you have. Get understanding. Though it costs all you have, though it costs the pain, though it costs the hurt, though it costs you uh, 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 um, getting free from that narrative that you have created from the trauma that you have experienced, get understanding. Offer the same grace. Extend the same grace to your mother that God has extended to you. Understand that it's not about you. You were just a casualty of a war that your mother was already experiencing. It wasn't personal. Ask God to help you to love her the way he does. God, pray, God, give me your eyes so that I can see what you see in my mother. I can see her the way you see her. Continue to ask God to help you to forgive her and release every offense. If you got to write down every record of wrong, right, that your mother has done. And then as you write it down, tear it up and say, God, I release all of this unto you because your word says that love keeps no record. Delete it out of your memory bank and allow God to hold your hand through the process. Healing is a journey. It's not a destination. It's going to take some time. So I pray that something that God used me to say was a blessing to you. And I'm going to close this out in prayer. I'm going to keep my eyes open because I don't want my battery to die. So, Father, Lord, I just thank you for my sister. Thank you for my brother, whoever is watching right now. I pray, God, that something that you used me to say brought healing to them, God, brought breakthrough, God, brought freedom to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would touch every mother and daughter, every uh, mother in some relationship, Father, that you'll begin to come in, Father, and break every follow ground. Father, that you'll begin to come in, Lord God, and heal those broken places. Father, Lord God, that you'll come in and begin to shine light in darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that something that you use me to say on today, Father, Lord God, will begin to pierce their heart. Father, every place that they have a stony uh, place in their heart towards their moms. Father, I pray that you will give them a heart of flesh. God, your word says that you will give us a heart of flesh and you will put a new spirit on the inside of us. Father, I pray that you will give your daughter, your son, a heart of flesh toward their mother. Help them to get understanding. Though it may cost everything that they once knew, everything that they once lost, everything that they once believed in, help them to get understanding. Break them free, God, from every narrative that they have been creating that, keep them, that keeps them distant from their mom. Lord God, even in the most impossible situations, not impossible to you, I pray, God, that you'll begin to come in and do a new thing, that you will do a new work on the inside of them. God, that you will change them. Lord God, that you will change the hearts. God, your word says that you hold the hearts of kings in your hands and you can turn it any which way you want. I don't care, God, whoever, if a mom or the daughter or the son has the hardest of hearts. God, your word says that you can change the heart any which way you want. So I pray, God, that you would change their hearts to forgive, change their hearts to love the way you love, change their hearts to experience and receive your love so that they're able to reflect it to their mom and vice versa so their moms are able to reflect it unto them. Father, help them to heal from everything. Help them to heal from every encounter, every situation, every trauma that they have experienced, especially as it relates to their moms. Father, Lord, Give them the grace to love the way you love. Father, give them the grace to be patient. Give them the grace to be kind. Give them the grace, God, to keep no records of wrongs. Father, let the blood of Jesus purify 
every negative thought process, every negative pattern, every negative perception that they have of their moms. God, help them, Lord God, to love their moms the way you love them. Give them eyes so that they can see through the lens of how you see their moms and not through the lens of the trauma that they have experienced. Father, let this very video bring healing, bring hope, bring an answer prayer. Father, let this video be an answer prayer. God, to your daughters, to your sons, Father. And we pray for complete healing and wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Comment below if this message, if this, I don't know what you want to call it, this word, this video was a blessing to you. And I will see you all in my next video. And to all the moms, all the moms to be, all the bonus moms, happy, 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 happy Mother's Day.